What's going on everybody? This is DJ Mojo, Saving the City one party at a time. I'm excited for this video. In this video, I have my good DJ friend, DJ Jazz. Say what's up. What's going on guys? In this video, we'll be talking about DB Technology speaker, the ES1203. So if you're interested in a speaker or never heard of it and you're just curious, you're in the market of looking for another speaker to add it into your arsenal for your event, stay tuned in this video. Uh, we're gonna tell you all about it, covering all the features, the advantages, disadvantages, um, and also we're gonna compare it to my speaker, the RCF Evox 8, just to give you some idea, some kind of context to how this speaker compares to that one. So once again, stay tuned in this video, let's get into it. So right here, um, if you don't know Jazz, we made a, another video talking about the Bose T8S mixer and he's here with me today again. And um, he currently owns the DB Technologies ES1203. But before we get into that, um, Jazz, tell us about yourselves and for those people who don't know you just yet, um, let them know what you're all about. Yeah, so I am primarily a wedding DJ, but I do all types of events. And over the last, I don't know, probably the seven, eight years, I'm always looking to upgrade from what I had. I was using the Bose L1 system. Love that system. I'll talk about it in a little bit, uh, in a few minutes. But I finally ended up with this when this came out, which is the ES1203, and it does have its advantages. I do miss my Bose, but I also have a lot of other experience and other type of speakers, typical like MRX, PRX, um, all the JBL lines, uh, even the SRX stuff. A lot of pass, a lot of power lines, and so I feel like I have experience to share real world experience, not just like quick reviews on different speakers. And I feel like I am in a pretty good place with these, and I feel like nobody really knows about these, and they're like kind of the perfect DJ for most mobile events and even like bigger size events if you supplement it. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really glad that you have a speaker uh, with us here today. And um, how much, how often do you use these speakers? Uh, I mean, these are my main speakers. Okay. Um, they're always used as my main DJ speakers. I use other Phil speakers, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, every gig I'm always using these, at least one of them. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. So uh, he does lots of weddings and he uses these as his mains. And um, I'm really, really excited to just dive right into the gear. As you can see right here, we have the, the DB ES1203 in its bag, in its case. And just to give you a size comparison, so with something that you may be already familiar with, we have the Evox 8, my favorite speaker. I've had this for a little bit more than two years, uh, just right here. So one size difference I guess you would say is that the DB is a little bit bigger and this is carrying a, a 112 inch sub this one carries two um, but uh, any, any features you can tell with, with your 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 well, case right here yeah I'm actually you're it's even bigger than this it's not the full story right here because mm. you have your the column speakers already in there right yes correct. so I don't it actually the way this comes uh, and we'll get to that in a minute is these little velcro straps right here actually support the two array speakers oh, got it. Um, and then there comes with a pole and the pole even comes it's all like one package which actually is a pretty nice package but I decided to get longer cases to keep it easier for setup rather than putting it all here mm. uh, and I found it easier just not to use this and mm. so I bought some Ariba cases to basically they look like gun cases you know you're carrying it like this one in each hand let us just show you an example of what that looks like we have it right here this is um, I have two of these um, one of them is the actual array stack and then uh, the other one same size is basically a dummy speaker is what it is. And instead of using the poles that everybody uses, like the one comes with that goes up, um, I use what's like a fake speaker, so it's just a cleaner look. Now, that was an additional accessory for the speaker. You don't have to use that, mm -hmm. um, but I think it just looks nicer. I think I was so used to using the Bose system, which is super clean. And when I got this and I set up, I was like, Ugh, I don't like seeing the pole. So I got the dummy speaker for that. Got it. And so it just goes in first and then the array goes on top. Cool. So I, I know a lot of people want to compare this speaker to the RCF Evox 12. Unfortunately, I do not have the Evox 12. I just have the Evox 8. But one of the things I could tell right away with my RCF Evox 8 is that everything is in this case right here. The poles, the top speaker, everything right here. Compared to the DB, you would need something like this separate that carries the top right yeah i mean even though the case that it comes in uh, it's somewhat separate it's just not the full length it mm -hmm. goes like, it goes like right here and it's in two separate pieces Got uh, it. but it still it sits on top of the case it uses velcro and nice. you know for packing like in your car it's not actually that good because 
you smash it depending on which way you're turning it. So mm -hmm. I think what it was made for is once you get to the gig and then you get it on the ground, you can put a dolly under it. Even they sell like a dolly kit. So then it's all like one push. But I found myself not really doing that ever because I have a dolly anyway that I put everything on. So I just immediately, like I said earlier, lost those cases and bought separate ones to put the speakers in. Got it. And, and before we open this up, uh, speaking about transportation real quick, I know the Evox 12 has a little like uh, dolly or something in the back where you can wheel it. it has wheels basically uh does this have wheels no so well you can buy it oh uh, you could you can buy it uh, but they're not mm -hmm. permanent i don't know if the evox 12 i don't remember when i looked at I it i think it's already there it's already built in the unit mm -hmm. um the dolly it's actually very expensive for the dolly they sell and really it's just like a 30 dollar dolly you could buy at home depot if you want like a little cart mm -hmm. and it just sits on top i mean it has a little groove so it's custom made for mm -hmm. it mm -hmm but I don't find myself ever really rolling one around. It's usually like I'm putting it on a bigger dolly. Mm -hmm. So again, I didn't get that feature. I thought if I was gonna spend additional money on the speaker, buying the cases and buying that dummy speaker that we'll show you in a minute mm -hmm. was worth more the investment than a little dolly to okay. transport it. Okay, well yeah. good. Um, well, I think one thing I also noticed about this case is that there's different handle points right here. There's one on top. So I know it's a bit heavy speaker, but there's one handle right here. There's a handle off to the side we can grab right here. And what about this one? And another handle right here, which you can use to, to carry this thing. Yeah, I wish though, and I, I don't know, I can't remember when I used those, but there's no handle on the bottom. So mm -hmm. when you're carrying the sub and you're usually not carrying it like you're kind of carrying on its side, you want to just grab the bottom and there's no handle. Uh, luckily, it's not that hard to grab around it, but it would be so much easier if there was a handle on the bottom of it. Well, good. Like some hope, type of thing. Well, yeah. I hope that, that could be yeah. a, a design uh, upgrade, a upgrade future, version two. <laughs> So um, I think we, we pretty much covered the case a little bit of, about the transportation aspect of it. Um, I'm gonna grab the mic from Jazz and he's gonna set it up and maybe this, we can have this as a quick time lapse for you to watch right now. All right, and here we are. We have it all set up, ready to go. This is my first time seeing it in person, so I'm excited to ask Jazz some questions about this. Um, so Jazz, uh, that probably took less than a minute, man. Less than a minute just to set this up. I've noticed that there isn't a specific pole. Is there a pole option to make this higher? Yeah, well, um, so one thing, um, you probably can't see the, the video there, but the ceilings are rather low here. They're not super high. And so this is a positive and a negative of the speaker, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually a great positive. Um, we are only, it comes with two arrays and you can actually, in the DSP in the system, which we'll get to in a minute, you can tune it and set it up and configure it for only using one of this arrays. And then you can use this like a monitor, like back at you, mm -hmm. or you can do like a stereo setup with one sub and put this one like on a tripod stand. Um, I don't do that, but I think that's one of the bigger selling features and I think a lot of people would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than buying two of them, you can just get one of them and start with that and see how it goes. Yeah. But um, yeah, it actually goes super high. When you put these on, you can see it. that's one of the reasons I actually bought this is because of how high it does go. Mm -hmm. um, does that make sense? That's great, yeah. yeah. So all of this comes when you purchase one of the ES-1203. Except, no, so the this is right here. This is all fake. It's just plastic. There's That's no what you're talking about, the dummy. This is yeah. called the dummy, I forgot what they call it. I call it the dummy speaker. I think it's actually called the designer pole because it's like if a designer made a pole, how they would make it. It's just plastic. It looks just like it. When you mount it, you can actually tow it in or tow it out. Um, even when it's full tight, you have a little bit of adjustment. I do like to loosen it a little bit before I make an adjustment. Um, and of course, since the array is on top, you're adjusting the whole thing while the sub stays one angle. So you're not having to get down and like move the whole unit and all your wires get all messed up. It all stays in one place. And of course, if you don't use the dummy speaker, it's the same thing if you mount the two arrays uh, or even one array on top, you just don't tighten it all the way and then you get your adjustment and then you do a full tight and then that's it. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility in like awkward rooms. Uh, and if you if you look at the back, there's no connections. It's super lightweight, and you just screw that on. So normally this would be one of those poles that you can extend up. Right. Correct. Yeah. So that's how that works. So instead of using a pole, I use this as my riser. So this one you had to buy separately. I did, and like it. it looks like you can disconnect it here, but it's actually kind of not welded, but right. plastic. It's all put in here. Uh, this is this 
all the way down as one unit. And so if I am doing like a really small event, like short ceilings, right. what I did do is I bought little bitty, instead of using this, and I don't even use this at all, you can actually mount this right to the sub. Mm -hmm. So you mount the two arrays together and basically that's your array starting from the sub and it just uses like a little one inch connection. So it is a little pull eyeball, it's like a two inch pull so it looks like it's stacked. And that's a great thing you can do for smaller events. So, so one thing I, I could take away from this is that there's different configurations depending Lots of, on how yeah. you like it. So it has different configurations, which is really nice. So you, if you're doing a small, intimate mm -hmm. uh, event, you could just use the arrays and watch. You, if you take it off, again, this is just the dummy speaker where my hand is. Right here, this is the dummy. But you could take this whole dummy off and then put this and this stack and you have the array and you use a M20 connection, the sub connection to stack them. And it, this is what it looks like. So it's a nice, short, little clean look. And what I did is I bought, uh, similar to what you're holding here, except on the other side, it's the M20 connection that screws in. So it's like a two inch connection. So it just sits right on top of the sub. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it goes, it goes like that, rather than using a pole and going all the way to the bottom, mm -hmm. like a bigger pole. Now yeah. for me, for my speaker, I use the RCF Evox 8. I do use the pole, and I don't believe the Evox series has a dummy speaker like this. No, they don't. I looked into it too. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess one downside for this, I, I like the, how sleek it is, and it just matches the whole look. Um, the thing is, you cannot attach any lights. Yes, you can. You can. And so that's actually, Ooh. I probably would have bought the Evox 12 if okay. it wasn't for that. Although now that I own this and I've heard the Evox 12, like I'm pretty good amount of times. I'm actually glad I ended up with the system anyway, even though I love the Evox 12. For, mm -hmm. I think it's probably the next best system at overall. Sure. Uh, maybe the Bose in terms of sound quality, but this one in terms of just output is definitely gonna be similar to the Evox 12. So let me actually take this off. Let me show you how cool this is. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, it's the coolest thing you've it seen. It doesn't look like you can attach no, a light. No, and the but... best part is you can go upside down. It doesn't matter which way. So it comes with this little joint connection, like a little pole. And all it is, is it looks kind of like a speaker pole connection. And right, there's it holes. Does. This is the dummy speaker. There's a hole on here. And watch, turn this upside down. Um, this is, oh, here, just turn it like this. So you can see, this is how you connect the two arrays. But it doesn't matter if you look, they go in here and lock. But this has a hole mm -hmm. right here. And that one has a hole, which is where that little plastic thing was. Mm -hmm. So when you mount these, it doesn't matter which one you have, if you have the pole in either one, but what you use these for is lights. Oh. So for example, this would mount like this, right. and you see there's a female hole on the top, right. which is what I mount my light on. What we have here is what I call the shorty setup for a smaller events where the ceilings are too short, like the one we're in here. I set it up like this. There's no dummy speaker. These are both the arrays attached. And the bottom and the top are the exact same, meaning that they both have a female hole. And they're great for attaching the dummy speaker, but also attaching a light that just goes like this, just drops right in. And that's how that works. So this is the adapter from Colorado uh, Sound and they made this for me and this is what i think is great for attaching a light and what's cool about this is even if i accidentally put this on backwards i can reverse it like i was saying because it's the exact same on the top and bottom they both have holes which is how i'm able to get this in here as well so it's awesome that how there is a solution for it i did not know that so we're going to leave a link to that item in the description below from Colorado Sound and Light so you can check that out if you're interested in getting one. What are three things, like what made you love the speaker right now? Like what, what are some three things? And we can let, go into detail about, about them. Yeah, so I was coming from the Bose L1 system. So when I decided to look for an upgrade, it needed to be a pretty significant upgrade. Mm. Not really in just sound because I knew what I had with the Bose was such good sound that I probably wasn't gonna find a dramatic upgrade, but I was looking at about all the other things that could be useful to me. So the height was huge. This thing can get really, really tall when you add, as you see, they can't, I can't even use it in the situation because the ceilings uh, are not tall enough, but that's why you're able to use it in the other configuration. So that's one, the height. Um, it has a built-in DSP 
that you can do digital steering. So even though they're really tall, I can actually digitally steer the sound to go down, flat, or up, mm. which is really cool. So you're not like actually articulating any arrays. You're doing it all through the DSP. Um, it also has inputs, outputs. You can run the stereo connection, like I was saying. Uh, you can even do a stereo pass-through, which uh, I don't know if anybody knows. It took me a while to figure out what that means. But basically, if you're set up in like a corner and your first speaker is by you, but the next one's really far away and you want to do left-right stereo instead of mono, sure. you can run a stereo signal to this and then it outputs just the right channel to the other speaker mm. all through the DSP. And there's definitely no other system that does that. This is the only one. And I actually normally run mono, but if you are gonna run stereo, that's like one of the best things ever mm -hmm. to anyone because I don't have to run two like two sets of cables right. uh, left and right. I mean, I run the left and right to this, but I don't then, it just goes from there, right signal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the full mono sum out. That's, that's what most systems do is a mono sum out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this will do however you set it up in the DSP. Got it. So I, uh, two things like, so first, like you love the height of this. And the height. And then the second is just the configuration of the DSP and, and the different options you can have there. Yes, there's multiple options. Um, I, I will say I don't use a ton of the options, but it's nice to like know that those options exist, like with the stereo options. But I do use the steering. So mm -hmm. depending on like where I'm, if I'm on a stage mm -hmm. and the speakers are up there, you can steer it down. Steering. And it just, you can hear that like, it changes the way the mids and highs align. That's great. Um, and I think it does some delay stuff with the sub too. So it, it does work. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's not going to be what it would be like if you were to actually set up a true line array and articulate it and have a full line array. But it does a pretty good job for a mobile setup. Got it. Uh, and then sound quality is great. And it has uh, two 12s. So one of the 12s is actually semi horn loaded. Mm. So it's you got one normal 12 firing this way, which will be great for the dance floor. But then when you go further back, that one will usually fall off and you have the other 12 that's horn loaded, giving you the stuff way far away. So mm. when you get far away, this thing bumps like pretty hard. Um, in fact, sometimes even more than when you're closer, I find. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a great that's setup. interesting. Yeah. So, so you like you like how tall it can get the the different settings in the back and, and then the optional, different configurations, configurations too. Configurations and yeah. the sound quality is amazing. It, yeah. It's very good. It's very good. It, um, it's it gets to the point where like unless you're a being it to other speakers, you're probably gonna say it sounds amazing. Um, I have had I guess use with your Evox Eight, Evox Twelve, Evol Fifties. I own the L One for several years, and I still like the way the L One sounds better. It's a smoother sound. It just is. There's just no doubt about it. And especially when you go, when I bought these, I did probably a two to three hour session in the back of a Target parking lot on cement, something that can hold like thousands of people, nobody there. And every time when I was with the guy, we were back and forth, the Bose was like, yeah, that sounds better every single time. But if you're not comparing it, there's no way to know. And this sound, this sounds, sounds very good. Mm -hmm. It's just that the Bose takes it to the next level in terms of smoothness. Maybe some people don't like the smoothness. I love that like super smooth, airy sound. And that's what the Bose gave me. It also gave me a little bit wider dispersion. This has a hundred and I think 120 degree, which is pretty wide. Like that's m wider than most like typical DJ speakers, but mm -hmm. the Bose was 180. Mm -hmm. So like, I could almost be like right here and hear the Bose just as clearly mm -hmm. as being like right here. Mm -hmm. which is awesome because it was basically my monitor. Got it. I didn't have to have a monitor. And with this speaker, uh, it's pretty good. But once you get about here, it falls off pretty strong. And I got used to that like sound of not dropping off, mm -hmm. of not thinking I have to have a monitor. Now I'm like wanting to go get a monitor because of that. Question for you though. I mean, how many of these do you own? I own two of them. You own two. Do you bring two at, at your events? Yes, but I a lot of the times I can get away with using one, and I'll use um, some fill speakers. Like I use an L1 Compact. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of people use S1s for maybe the back of the room or the other side, mm -hmm. or even by me and use this one closer to where the dance floor is. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing that a lot lately, just okay. using one of these, but two of these does really nicely for a pretty good size event. Well, good. Do you think, like, I mean, how many crowds, how many people, like, do you, can this, do you think it can hold or handle it? Yeah, it's always an interesting question because I think it can range. And the same thing with the bows. I think uh, if you supplement it with more sub, like if you go out and rent other subs, these mm -hmm. can probably do hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. But with them just like this, uh, I feel like I have pretty high standards and I, I don't like to be unrealistic. And I, sure. I don't think I would want to use it for more than 300 people. Got it. On, okay. on like a typical wedding. Sure. I'm sure you could, and I'm sure people do it all the time, but you, you just, it's not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. um, so 
you can buy subs and or rent subs to use it and then i say probably close to 400 maybe even a little bit more got it because these scream the, the actual rays do really that's awesome. pretty high powered so would, would you say that with this with having two of them at your events like do you think it's um you you won't need another subwoofer it's is this how's how's the base how's the low end with having two of them so the low end is interesting. It took me a while to actually get used to it. it there's a lot of it, and there's a lot of it at 60 hertz. Uh, so take that for whatever you want. Uh, mm -hmm. It's There's a ton of low end up to about probably 60, and it falls off pretty quickly. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, then I'm just going to have to get subs. But the realistic situation is if you're at a wedding, a lot of people just don't care. It's not going to make a difference if you're not having like the 40 hertz stuff mm -hmm. that you would get from like an 18 inch sub or something sure. where you have dedicated subs. The problem is this guy, even though it's a dual 12, it's trying to do a lot of frequencies, just like your Evox system. It's trying to do everything from 120 down and it does it all the way down to 60, really, really strong. And then after 60, it falls pretty hard, I will say. Mm -hmm. That's the only like downside. So what I've done is on the Bose T, uh, the T4S mixer that I have, mm -hmm. I just went on the parametric EQ and bumped it at 50. Mm -hmm. And it actually made a huge difference. Oh, good. Because I just, a little tight parametric EQ bump at 50, problem solved. And I got a lot more bottom end. But it's not that it doesn't have bottom end. It just falls hard at 60. But you have tons of material from like 60 to 80 where, truthfully, that's where it counts. Like if you're at an event, that's where a lot of people want it. Like that's what people hear. The stuff you feel is going to be below 60. Got it. But I do miss like having dedicated subwoofers. And it's always nice to like when I combine this with real subs. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I like the design. I like the configurations that you mentioned here. Um, I want to show you guys what it looks like in the back. The connections, the, maybe you can show us the DSP settings that it has. Yeah. So let's do that. So here we are. We are now displaying the back of the ES-1203. And the, one of the great things about this speaker, talking about configurations, is that uh, for the top two speakers, it doesn't matter which way you have them, they both work. You That's, may want to elaborate on that. Yeah, so like, I, they both have holes top and bottom. So if you actually come closer, you can see it looks like it's upside down on this top array, which it is. But I could flip and have this one up here and this one down here. And there's a speak on connection on this one too. So it doesn't even it doesn't like make a difference which one you go to because when they connect, there's a connection inside digital connection when they latch the two arrays latch, and the DSP you tell it if you either have one or two. Mm. And we'll get to that in a minute, and we'll show you with like all the DSP features. So you you select one or two, mm. but it doesn't matter which direction they're going, um, which is nice. So you don't have to think about it when you take it out of the bag. You're not like having to check because it doesn't matter. Mm. And that way, I come out the light on both this side and this side. Got it. Well, we're looking at here. Um, tell us about the connections that we have here. It seems like there's different inputs that you can put into the speaker. Yeah. So. It is a little mini mixer. So we have three inputs and you can select um, mic or line for those. Um, and then we have the output. So here are your three inputs and then you have an output. And with that output, we can do mono sum. We can send left channel, right channel, which is really nice. Um, whatever you're going to, another speaker, to another sub, whatever. And it also has Bluetooth. Uh, I don't ever use that, but you can if you want to for like a house party if that's only mm -hmm. something you were doing. But I just use the input too. I just have it. And I have these cables just always installed, these right angle, just to make it easier. So when I get at a gig and I'm like getting down here, I don't have to like ratchet up here. I just have it already ready to go. You kind of hacked your, <laughs> your system right here. So a couple of things. One, he used right angle I guess adapters, yeah. right? Or, they're not adapters. They're just right they're angle called? cables right on angle this cables. side only, not on this side. Got it. Yeah. So he's, he's using right angle cables. And a second thing I've noticed, what are these things that you strapped on here? It seems like it manages your cable. That's all it is, is cable management. Um, I'm like OCD about that. Uh, and uh, even on the back of the array, you can see. So where I mount my light cable that goes down. Mm -hmm. um, they're just, I bought these like on Amazon. They're just, based, I typed in cable management, I kid you not, or something on mm -hmm. eBay or Amazon. And all these are, these are, they're sticky, they stick on, and then you just unlatch it, run the cable down, and clip it in. Very nice. There's some variations of these different sizes. I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, these work well, I Good. found. Yeah. Well, I like what you did here. So, in terms of like how the whole cables things work, I, there's a lot of inputs and outputs here. So, there's three inputs you can do um, XLR or quarter inch. Yes. And so you would connect the, your, your mixer board to here. And then what goes into these tops? Like what, is, is it these speak-ons? Yeah, so there is a speak-on cable that runs from the connection here. Okay. Um, 
or from the top, it's the same. It doesn't even matter which one you do. Okay. There's two speak ons, but obviously you don't use both at the sure. same time. You run one, so those go together, and then yes, it just comes down into uh, one of these. Now it actually does matter which one you plug it into because okay. this is the right one is for used if you're using both arrays. Mm. But in the earlier in the video, I said you could separate and use this right. as like a mini system, and then you would just plug in one here. Mm. So that connection it shows you on there's a little diagram showing you if you're using both arrays, use that one because wow. it's a different. Amp. It runs. It's actually two amps that power these, mm -hmm. and then one amp that powers. There's three amps in here, which is really nice. Wow. So okay. it, it needs to know if it's running one or two amps for the arrays. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, I like it. Yeah. So, so this is the the back of the speaker, um, and I'm sure that it comes with a detailed manual, so you can really figure out the settings that you're trying to get. And speaking about the DSP, um, so we have Jazz here going to go into a little bit of detail, not through de uh, all the details, but he can run us through what it looks like uh, in the back of the speaker. So there is a lot here, yeah, and I'm not going to go through everything, but some of the basic features are, if you go over here, here's the digital steering. So you can see, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but there's like a little line showing you how the speakers are angled. Mm. So if I'm going up, uh, straight out, or down, so this is called digital steering. And then you can see I can configure it for that stereo setup. So it shows you one sub with two little mini speakers. It's basically each column array. So it looks like there's an actual image. Yeah. So you, you can really have a visual of what kind of setup you're having and configure for that. So that's how you run that. Um, and then in here, that's just your main output level. Mm -hmm. uh, these are, if you go into each one of these, you have your mixer for that input. So you can go into and EQ each input. You can also EQ the overall sound if you go to the main menu page. But it's nice because one of the things I did is actually drop the bass, which sounds kind of weird, and this quite a bit because I did find because it has such heavy bass at 60 hertz that you got to be careful of that microphone rumble. Mm -hmm. So I dropped the bass and I can actually show you that. Um, I think I did it right here. So look, minus six on the low frequencies is kind of crazy for people to think because everybody wants more bass. But what that did is it allowed everything to sound a little cleaner, gave me headroom. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is in my Bose mixer, since I'm running the mics on one input and the DJ mixer on another, I just made sure I had enough bass on, the, on that input on the Serato mm -hmm. coming from the Bose mixer yeah. so that my mics still kept flat, but then the DJ input from Serato was pretty heavy. So it made up for the 6 dB loss. Got it. Well, great. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed about uh, this compared to the Evox 12, the Evox 12 has a very simple uh, back, uh, where in terms of like a simple input, output. Here you actually have some flexibility, some options of how you can run your sound. And also there's a Bluetooth uh, capability too. So there's lots of options and features here. Three inputs where the Evox 12 can only have one. I'm just comparing with a speaker that I know and can, can relate to, but it seems like there's lots of things you can do here. Yeah, I, I mean the inputs I think are great. I think it's always nice to have inputs and even Bluetooth. I just find the DSP going in there and being able to adjust the EQ if you wanted to per input or a global EQ adjustment. Um, and you could do a couple other things. There's a feedback um, reducer in here and stuff. The reason I don't have those on is because I'm not just running a mic to this, but if you were running only a mic and do like a presentation, it has built-in feedback. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, something that I think some people will use, but I, I, I choose not to use a lot of the additional features. I use it mainly for the digital steering mm -hmm. Uh, and then deciding how many, you know, if I have both of these stacked, and then I don't know what else I really, other than the minus 6 dB on the bass sure. globally. So I have a fun question for you. Well, kind of a serious one. I know a lot of DJs are probably wondering, do you know from the best of your knowledge if this speaker comes in white? It does. It does? It does. No it does way. come in white. And I, it was like overnight, probably lost sleep thinking about which one I should get. And I did get the black, obviously. Um, it'd be nice to have a set in white. It'd be nice to have both. I feel like <laughs> it's, it's just not always ideal to have white because sometimes you stick out more depending on the situation. Uh, I, I think in my personal opinion, plus it gets dirty super easily and it shows all any kind of scuff marks and you just constantly have to keep up with it. But I think it's nice to have both. It'd be, it really would because then you could choose based on the event and the decor of the room, mm -hmm. which color you're gonna go with. Mm -hmm. And they even make the dummy speaker in white. So everything's white. Um, but I know I feel because of just like I'm so OCD with cable management and everything, I would have to get white cables. 
Like you got right. you If you're gonna go white, you got to go all white. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my opinion. But right, right. So that was another reason. It was like it really drove the cost up too when you start adding the the white feature if you want to complete the look. And that is true because that means you, even your this lighting fixtures out, would yeah. have to be white. Yeah, it would stick out. Um, I don't know if Colorado makes a white one. I mean, you could paint these. You could probably just paint the fixture. I'm sure like spray paint would mm -hmm. take care of most of it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, cool. I figured I asked that question. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, we cannot run any sound to give you a demo of what this sounds like. I can describe it, and like, and I know that's like probably the worst way. We're, we'll go ahead. What are we gonna say? Because we can't. We're in a studio here. Yes, we are in a studio, so we do want to be mindful of the other businesses here in this property. But I know he mentioned about sound earlier, um, and Jazz. I mean, he'll he'll do his best to to describe it to you. I know he mentioned some of it earlier, but. Uh, once again, for those people who may have missed it, how would you describe the sound from the speaker? So the way I would describe the sound is it sounds like a column rate you would expect to sound super smooth. You can be very close to it and it has a decent throw because it has eight high power drivers. Uh, I do find the throw to be co comparable to a high end, like let's say like SRX or ETX speaker in terms of like when you go further back it throws about the same i do think in a weird way the bose because it had the 24 drivers as long as nobody was blocking it had better throw in the highest mids it, it just the pattern control was better um but it gave up a, on a couple other things like the low end would die a little bit further obviously with the smaller woofers on that unit so that's one of the reasons i got this because of all the flexibility over the bose um, and the fact that it gives you better low end. I was always having to add subs if I was doing huge events with the bows to keep up. Uh, and with this, it's all one unit. I don't have to bring additional subs, whereas the bows, I had to. I mean, that's obviously my opinion. Like, I mean, there's plenty of DJs that don't add additional subs to the bows, but with this one, all one unit, a little bit heavier uh, than like the Evox or any other uh, column array that I've actually used. I think this might be the heaviest, but it's not heavy. Um, I think it's like 45 pounds. So we went upstairs to come up here and it's fine. Um, so that's also another reason I didn't get that dolly because we push it. I'm never really pushing it around. I put it on a dolly and I'm not carrying it around too often. Well, great. Um, so, so Jazz, I know that uh, people have seen like a very good walkthrough of the speaker. Now on their side, they're probably wondering, should I get the speaker? But you know, I want to hear in your opinion, do you think you're going to still use a speaker in the next few couple of years? Or is there anything else that you're looking at on getting or um, what are your thoughts about that? So I've had this for a little over a year and I've been really, really happy. It took me a while to figure out uh, the adjustments on the DSP to really get the gain structure right and where I'm very happy with it and I have enough headroom and everything. I don't see myself switching, to be honest with you, because at least right now, because there is nothing better for the size and price ratio. You have to spend a lot more money or go up in a lot heavier and bigger components to, to really be better. And so for the size, and price ratio, even though it's a little pricey for a lot of people, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a beginner speaker for sure. Uh, I think like the Evox system, they make like the J8, mm -hmm. that's a way better value in terms of, you know, it's less than a thousand, it sounds really good. But if you're wanting to step up and you're really wanting to get more headroom, this is a good system. I do have my eye, I always have my eye. Just when I had the Bose for several years, I, I mean, I feel like every other month I was looking, I always wanted to upgrade to find something better um, because why not? Why not get better sound quality and more headroom if you can in a small package? So I'm waiting for Bose just because I missed the sound from the Bose. Um, them to release like a Model 3. The last one was the Model 2. Don't think that's going to happen. So I'm with this right now. And this has been very, very good for me. That's awesome. So this speaker isn't for everybody, but for those people who are looking for more headroom, but and, and with good value, with, with everything, how compact it is, and the sound quality is great, and all the features, uh, this may be the right speaker for you. But um, if you're looking, if you're a beginner DJ, maybe not go for this just yet, unless you're loaded and want to just drop money. <laughs> You can do so, but you can get one of them. Get but, one of them. You know, if one goes out, I always feel like then you're screwed. And like, I don't think I'd be comfortable. I, I have seen DJs just have one speaker, like when they start off. Mm -hmm. So it is doable, but they're about 2,500 to buy one of these setups. And again, it comes with the array, it comes with the sub. So, mm -hmm. and it gets more, you know, you add the dummy speaker, it, it's more expensive. So it can right. get very expensive quickly if you want to do the dummy speaker. I think overall, I, I understand from the price point, it's a great value. You're getting great value for what it is um, at that price range. It'll be great for DJs who are looking for something like this at their events, who are looking for more headroom, looking for more that, that's still compact, sleek, and has all the features that we just mentioned here. Yeah, it's just another column array alternative. There are so many out there now these days, and I feel like every other month a new one comes out. Mm -hmm. 
um, it's just another alternative and that's it's up to you to decide if this one's for you or then RCF or the Evolves for you this one was for me I tested all of them I like the extra headroom and I like a lot of low end and I feel like having the dual 12 from this is definitely what separates more than any of the flexibility or any of the features I don't think any of them have a dual 12 I don't think so too yeah and so that really will help your your low end to make it feel like you don't have to bring extra subs well, there you have it. I, we covered a lot about this speaker right here, and it really is up to you. I mean, we, like like what Jazz says, there are a lot of column array speakers out there, and that's why we have this video for you guys, so you can be more knowledgeable about what's out there. So many for us DJs, and we just have to choose the one that's that we like. And hopefully, um, you know, this ha this video that we present to you has been very helpful. And if any questions, please feel free to reach out to Jazz directly. Uh, Jazz, what? What's your Instagram handle so people can yeah, get follow jazz, you? And that's J A S underscore productions. Okay. And then if you're interested in contacting me for anything, it's DJ underscore mojo. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If there are any other speakers, any other products out there that you want us or me to to talk on or, or meet up with people who have these kind of gear that you're looking for, let me know in the comment section down below. And what are your favorite aspects of this speaker? What are your thoughts about the speaker? Leave them in the comment section below. We are here to help you guys out to make the best decisions on those DJ pur purchases uh, for your business. But once again, thank you all so much for watching. We hope that you guys took tremendous value out of this. Make sure you hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe. I'm DJ Mojo, Saving the City, one party at a time. We'll see you in the next video.